Hello, awesome humans out in the globe. Hey, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, and if you have, then sit down, grab some coffee, and rub those feet. Don't have somebody else do it, because that's weird. But anyhow, so let's talk about a very serious issue, uh, but I want to explore how you can use manifestation to begin healing from it, okay? So I want to talk to you about body dysmorphia. And again, I'm coming at this from a very psychological understanding of what it is, um, you know, also the kind of neuroscience behind it and what's going on with and in our minds with body dysmorphia, but also how the work of Neville and manifestation can actually help heal you, okay? Now, first things first, I always have to do this. So sorry, it's the kind of disclaimer thing. I am not a medical doctor. I am not a psychiatrist, right? But I do know and I do have knowledge and I do have past experience with body dysmorphia myself. So this is not just something that I'm talking to you academically, right? So again, for those of you who have never heard of body dysmorphia, and you might even not even be aware that you might have had it, is essentially you've had some sort of experience or a traumatic episode, or you have just bought into a load of social pressure around body image issues, okay? And so what that means is that you might have a particular distancing that happens between you and your body, and, it, and that distancing usually starts from within, meaning you may not trust yourself or you may not trust something that happens to you or you may feel a certain pain in your body or something that happens in um, to you uh, related to your body, like an injury or something. And then you begin to feel distanced from your body, okay? But then also you may have a traumatic episode or abuse or something like that that makes you feel like you should distance yourself from your body. And so you're always not in a state of ongoing paranoia, but a state of questioning and a state of not trusting your body, okay? And so that is fundamentally the heartbeat behind what body dysmorphia is. So again, you can either go through trauma, abuse, or again, it's just the practice of going through all of the ideas that we have, especially in Western culture, that focuses on, let's say, women looking a certain way or acting a certain way. And the same for men as well. Like, oh my gosh, you should have a six pack or and uh, so on and so forth. So again, Yes, this predominantly, according to statistics, really does affect more women than men, right? And there is a huge, huge kind of hyper-focus around women and their bodies. I mean, that's been around since the ancient times, and we can even point to that, especially in Greek times. I mean, you can go to Greece today and see all the statues, right? And they're predominantly about women, but the, you can also see statues about men and the perfect figure, okay? So a lot of this is down to, yes, trauma, yes, abuse, but also it's a cultural value, which is kind of warped, right? When you, when you think about it, and forgive the French, but it's kind of fucked up, like that we We've actually created so much social pressure that it's actually caused mental health issues and, and, and strains, okay? So what that does though, and now we're going to try to understand this from a kind of like a manifestation breakdown. Because remember, manifestation, or as Neville calls it, right, a series of states that we keep jumping in and out of is, and, and I love his technique or his understanding of, of manifestation because to me, it actually explains a lot of things, not just because it's a, it's a great way, but he actually comes at it psychologically. And that's where my training really, really comes into play. So when you're trying to understand manifestation, it just means experience. You're experiencing life and you're going through and you're creating things that you're experiencing, but you're creating from the state, which means a body of beliefs that you've accepted. But that body of beliefs is rehearsed, right? The more you do it, the more you become. Even Neville talks about habits, right? And so your identity is just nothing more than a habit, but same as the same thing with body dysmorphia. The more that you practice the identity of body dysmorphia, the more that you will identify with it. And the more that you identify with it, the more that your brain will give you dopamine. Yes, if you know anything about dopamine, you know it's a reward neural molecule, but it's not just a reward, it rewards you for repeating, repetition and expectation, right? So the more that you expect something, the more that dopamine will be deployed into your body, okay? So yes, you can get rewarded, 
for very bad and awful beliefs. Hence why even drug addicts struggle to break the addiction because they're getting rewarded for it, right? Dopamine doesn't judge you. It just rewards you, okay? Now, with body dysmorphia though, and using manifestation, you have to understand that now that we've just given you a basic definition of manifestation, you can actually take that and actually now begin to understand body dysmorphia a little bit better, in my opinion, because since Neville's approach is psychological and so is body dysmorphia, we can now begin deconstructing and trying to fully understand what's going on. So if there is a body of beliefs, which is a, a, a state, a body of beliefs is always more than one. So even if you can point back to one issue and be like, oh, when I was seven, my parents all started making bad comments about how I looked or my weight or whatever it is, that is not one belief. That is one belief masking as many other beliefs. And so if you're going to mold and shape a new um, state, which means a new identity that has a perceptive lens or a way of seeing the world, then you want to be actively involved in the process. You don't want to be a victim to your own um, ecosystem of beliefs. You want to be the operant power, as Neville says, right? You want to be the god of your own experience rather than allowing other things to be the gods of your own experience, like fear of your own body or whatever it is, okay? So how do you do that? Well, <clears throat> if this is about belief, which I do believe it is, right? Then you need to be fully aware that you need to be constructing the beliefs every single day. And with an issue like body dysmorphia, it might take you time, right? Even, um, and I absolutely love his, his perspective, but even Neville... Um, his uh, mentor, Abdullah, if you've never met or, 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 you know, been introduced to him, I encourage you to get into his work as well. I know there's not much on him, but you should definitely, definitely get into whatever we have of his. And if you can't find it, get in touch and I'll make sure that you have access to it. But Okay, so back to this idea of beliefs, okay? So that means you have a series of beliefs that you've been rehearsing about your body. So that means you now need to create new ones, okay? And that has certain characteristics to it. And if you watch any of my other channel, then you will find out that I am a big endorser of what I've created as the characteristic chain developer, okay? What that means is you're creating characteristics of the new person. So that means, what does that mean? So for somebody who has body dysmorphia, that means you're going to look at your body, not even necessarily as an enemy. I mean, unless you have an aggressive form of it, right? But you are going to feel like, oh, what is that twinge? Or what is this? And oh my gosh, I don't want people to touch me. And so then what that means is you might need to borrow some techniques from, let's say, CBT or uh, DBT. So if you've never heard of that, that's co co like cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, you also can use narrative therapy. And so, you know, I want to encourage you to explore these or get in touch if you want to begin using these. Again, I am not a trained therapist, but I'm very, very well aware of these. And I use this in all of my coaching programs. And I've used it for such a long time that I am comfortable enough to use all of these techniques with you. But what you want to do is you want to use the characteristic chain developer that I've created and you want to, and, and if, if you don't know what that is, find that in the, the, the Reddit that I write on under OK Initiative and that's my handle on there. And um, if not, then get in touch. But what it is, is you are basically choosing the, the person that you want to become. And that person has anywhere from 10 to 20, probably more, but characteristics, right? So choose 10 to 20, write down a list. What does that mean? So for example, if you are like, I love my body, that's going to feel weird at first. Even Neville says, when you're manifesting, when you start out, though false, which means, hey, there's going to be a moment where you're going to feel like you're, like you're an imposter. You're like playing somebody else's role, okay? So that's fine, right? Don't give that too much meaning. Just know that this is part of the process. And so you choose like, I love my body. So that's one characteristic that you want to start embodying, right? And again, it might feel weird. And if you've ever had body dysmorphia, it's definitely going to feel weird. Um, so what does that mean? Well, that's one characteristic, but the characteristic has actions. The characteristics has certain um, ways of being in the world. And so you might even look at somebody else that already has overcome it right? And so I want to encourage you to do that because that'll kick on the mirror neurons in your brain, which means that's how we learn. We see other people doing stuff and we're like, oh, I want to be like, just, like, just like them. So then you actually mirror their behaviors and you can do that from the outside, right? But again, you want to do the work inside to outside. So if you're like, I love my body, what does that mean? So create a scene where you're like, actually, you, and, and by the way, in these scenes, you don't have to say, I love my body, right? But you feel it, you feel it. And then you, somebody in your friendship group or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever it is, right? Your significant other 
or your mom or your dad is actually saying to you, wow, you look great. Again, they don't have to say anything verbally about that, right? But you know what they, what they mean, okay? And then you feel it and you rehearse it and you redo it over and over and over. And yes, in the 3D, to create a cohesive relationship between the subconscious mind and the conscious mind, you rehearse these things in action. So yes, physical action is required as well. Now, I know a lot of people will disagree with that, especially if they're hardliner Neville Goddard's, right, followers. Um, and I disagree with that misinterpretation because I don't think Neville's against action, right? I think he's, a, he's against a particular type of action, all right? And that, and that action is from a lack rather than from a state of being fulfilled, okay? So again, I could keep going on this. In fact, I'll probably do a workshop if I get enough comments on this um, and we'll break down body dysmorphia or maybe mental health issues in general and we'll make sure that we actually use manifestation as a way to understand them, but also as a way to build a new version of yourself because that's ultimately what this is. You're building a new version, a 2.0 version, and that's what I want for you as well. So again, more to come, but I wanted to deal with this because I know I've had to deal with that in the past and that wasn't an exactly a fun thing, but again, I've learned things about myself and then it's actually made me a better manifester as well. So much love to you all. Be safe in the world and get in touch if you're ever looking for coaching. All right, talk to you soon.